Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're talking about gear. What a surprise. I'm talking about camping gear actually. So a lot of you guys watch my Weekender Lander videos where I'm out camping and off-roading and whatever. Uh, and I get questions on all of those videos. What's that chair? What's that stove? What's that pan? What do you recommend for this? What do you like for that? Why do you use this? And this video is gonna be answering some of those questions. I can never answer all of them, but this video is gonna be answering the questions typically around kind of most of my camping gear. So it's not gonna be really like the tools like I did in a recent video or survival gear, bug out gear, EDC gear, none of that, just camping gear in this video. So let's start at the beginning, the gear that I choose to use, and I'm gonna say gear a lot in this video, so get prepared. But the gear that I choose to use is typically stuff that is easy and simple and fast to set up. I like being able to load up my truck for camping fast. When I get to wherever I camp, I wanna be able to set it up fast. I wanna be able to cook and use whatever I need to use fast. And I wanna be able to put it away fast and get home and unload and put it back on the shelf fast. So the main requirement for my gear is quick and easy for the most part. So the stuff that you'll see here that I'm gonna show you some stuff, and if you wanna just skip ahead, I'll link to a bunch of great options down in the video description below. Um, but the stuff I use is typically geared towards fast setup and fast takedown and easy and fast to use. So that is that, there's higher quality stuff, there's more complex stuff, there's some stuff that can handle a variety of more tasks or whatever, but for me, I kinda like to keep it simple and quick. So if you're anything like me and you don't love to spend you know, 30 minutes setting up camp when you get there, uh, then the gear that I use is probably up your alley. On the other end of the spectrum, if you get some peace and you really like the process of setting up and you like to set up a tent for 10 minutes or whatever, then the gear that I'm gonna be talking about might not be for you, so yeah. So let's start with chairs, chairs. The chair I'm sitting in right now, this is my favorite chair right now. So this is a front runner chair. It's, I don't know exactly the price, 50 to 70 or something in there. It's kind of honestly, middle of the range for chair prices. There's a lot of chairs that are like $200, which is crazy to me. And even a $70 chair is pretty expensive, uh, but these are robust and burly and they're gonna, they're gonna take care of you for a long time. They're not the lightest chair in the world, but they are the quickest to set up in my opinion, and they do fold down nice and compact. But the reason I like them so much is just that they're nice to sit in. I like having armrests, they're comfortable, they're at a nice height so you're not like sitting on the ground. Uh, but I'll show a another option here in a second that I also like. But the front runner, I like it a lot because it's so easy to set up. Let's see if we can see here. So you set it on the ground, it's a little bit out of frame but you'll get the picture. You fold this up, you bring it up, and then it's set up. Just like that, takedown is just as easy and then it's ready to go. So this sticks with my kind of fundamental element of fast and simple to set up and use, but also robust. These chairs are gonna last you for a long time. Another chair that I like but isn't nearly as stable is this chair. This is a Helinox. This is an actual Helinox in multicam, of course. Uh, and these chairs are super light and they are very compact, but you can see by the base, they're not super, super stable, and they are a little lower. However, they are pretty comfortable, so if you're looking for that lower to the ground kind of thing, or you don't have much space, or you don't have much uh, capacity for extra weight, this is a good option. These are pretty expensive as well, and while I always do like to support kind of the main originator of a product, which I believe Helinox probably was the original designer of these, there are a lot of rip-offs as well. Um, like this is a moon lens. So again, while I do prefer supporting kind of the originator of a product, you can get much cheaper options. For instance, if you want a bunch and you just wanna keep them in your vehicles or whatever, this is essentially how small this chair packs down to, and it's very light, a couple of pounds, I'm guessing maybe two pounds, I'm not sure. But a little bit harder to set up, but a quick, easy option. Having said that, you know, the chairs you pick up at your grocery store or Walmart or whatever that are like seven bucks, if that's what's in your budget, those will suit you just fine. However, they're not quite as comfortable, they might not 
be as compact and whatever, but you know, whatever's in your budget, you can use. Uh, but these are kind of my two go-to chairs. And then one thing I always recommend is a knife. I, I mean, I have a knife in my EDC, obviously, but I like bringing a fixed blade knife camping. Uh, the Benchmade Butchcrafter is one that I just love to use. It's one that I used in my last video that a lot of people ask questions about. Uh, and then a good headlamp. Uh, headlamps vary wildly in prices. This is a very cheap option from a good company, Streamlight. I think this is like 20 bucks or something. Uh, typically, you're gonna get what you pay for in a headlamp for the most part, as far as ruggedness and reliability down the road. So I would probably stick to a name brand headlamp. I like the ones from BioLite a lot. I like the ones from Olight a lot. Uh, and then the Streamlight option is just very cheap, lightweight uh, options. So a headlamp comes in very valuable when you're setting up camp, when you're closing your tent, opening it, looking for stuff, cooking, whatever. I always use headlamps when I camp. There's rarely a time where I'll go camping and I won't have a headlamp on my head. So check out a good headlamp. I'll link to some options that I like down below. And then all the other camping gear, which I'll kind of breeze over, I put in a tub. I actually did a video a long time ago about this tub specifically and not a whole lot has changed, but the reason you wanna get a tub or a bin or a tote or whatever you wanna call it is you keep all of your core essential stuff in there. So when you're ready to go camping, you just grab it and you throw it in your truck and you're ready to go. This is my favorite method of kind of having all of the camp stuff in one place. It doesn't take a whole lot of room in your garage or wherever you wanna put it. And when you're ready to go, you know for the most part that everything you need is in that tub. So depending on how big or how small, what kind of room you have in your vehicle, you can you know make the kit however big or small you want it. I love these Plano Sportsman's tubs. They come in a variety of sizes. This is kind of one of the bigger ones with wheels on it. It's a little bit overkill, but I just have this thing filled with all kinds of stuff, fire starting stuff and plates and stove. And, and I think there's like a hammock in here. Anyway, I put a lot of stuff in here. Uh, so I went for the bigger one and I just throw it in the back of the truck. I have plenty of room. So I went for that. Another option, well, they have these in all kinds of sizes. So I used to use two of the smaller ones. So here is an example. This gray one is the bigger one. This is what I use. This is a smaller one. So it's a Plano Sportsman's sportsman's trunk. Uh, I'll, again, I'll link to everything down below. But if you want a smaller one, if you only have room for a smaller one, or if like two of these smaller ones, they stack on each other really nice, makes sense to you. You can obviously split up your kit. Maybe you have like your cooking gear and then your, your fishing gear or something. Tubs, I love. I love to keep stuff organized in these kind of things. Another nice one that is also very rugged and durable is this one. This is the Front Runner. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Front Runner Wolf Pack or Cub Pack, I think. I think they have a couple different sizes and they have a higher lid. These things stack really nice and they're very rugged and robust. You want a good tub, especially if you're in like different kind of weather because when it gets cold, a lot of the cheaper plastic tubs will just break really easy if you set them on the ground too hard, or you kick them or something falls on them. So both the Front Runner, and the Plano Sportsman's trunk have served me really well. A lot of people like the action packers. I don't really like the shape of them. Uh, doesn't The shape kind of isn't as efficient, I think, in my mind, as these ones. These have more kind of the ratio of interior volume to exterior volume is pretty good versus some other tubs out there. So those are just kind of my, my choice. And then a pot that you'll see me using a lot is this little guy. It's a little aluminum GSI pan, skillet, whatever you want to call it. And it's simply because it folds down so small. So it's very lightweight. It's not the highest quality thing. It's also not the most expensive thing, but I like how light it is and how small it is. Now this isn't a pan that I'm using every day to cook in my kitchen or anything like that. This I use once in a while when I go camping. So if you don't camp that much and you want to save some money, by all means, just grab uh, one of the skillets that you use normally in your house and bring that camping as long as it can handle uh, whatever you're gonna cook on it. Like some of these can handle like straight up on a campfire while others can more handle, you know, the propane kind of cooking that I do for the most part. Uh, so this is a great option, but again, if you're on a tight budget, if you just don't camp that much, just grab whatever you use in your kitchen and use that. You can also use cast 
iron. This is the Lodge cast iron. Uh, they're very heavy, but people love to cook on cast iron. You can just throw it right on the fire. Uh, very robust, you know, you can, you can keep these things and hand them down to your children if you want. Also, carbon steel is much like cast iron in that it's pretty much unbreakable uh, and you have to season it and all that stuff, but another good option. Uh, and then sometimes I will bring like a bigger, deeper one with me uh, if I'm making like a stir fry or something that is just more, has more volume than kind of these smaller pans will take up. So, I mean, again, use whatever you want. I'm not gonna get into like, oh, nonstick and Teflon and blah, 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 blah. Use whatever you want, honestly, as long as it can handle whatever you're gonna cook on it. So again, not all pans can handle just being thrown right on a campfire. And then utensils and stuff. Uh, I've talked about this in the past, but I like these long handled sporks and spoons and stuff, uh, especially because they come in very handy when you're eating Mountain House out of a bag. Now I don't do that much when I'm camping with Ashley, but a lot of times when I'm just camping by myself or with the boys or whatever, uh, and I don't feel like cooking, I'll just make a mountain house because I like them and they're super easy and there's basically no cleanup. You cook it in the bag, you eat it out of the bag, and then you obviously throw the bag away, don't leave the bag out there. So pack it up uh, and throw it away back when you get home. Uh, and these longer ones are a great option for that. Uh, but again, if you just wanna grab some silverware that you use in your normal kitchen and toss it into your camping kit, by all means, do that. Uh, I do have some camping specific pots and pans and bowls and whatever. These are some from GSI, uh, like enamelware, I think, which are, you know, just classic. This is what your grandpa used when he took you out camping probably as well. I can, I sometimes do, I'm sometimes lazy and use paper plates or paper bowls and stuff like that. I try for the most part, uh, just because, you know, I kind of care about the environment a little bit to not use like paper and plastic products that much. But a lot of times when you're out camping, it just, it makes sense and it's so easy. So sometimes I'll use paper plates and, and I don't really ever use paper bowls, but you could use paper bowls as well. Uh, so that's just another option. If you just want to keep it stupid, simple, uh, very easy cleanup. For instance, if you're camping for multiple days uh, and you don't have a very great way to kind of clean all your pots and pans, uh, then paper products is a great option. If you are cleaning your pots and pans, this is one of my favorite things right here. I, I don't know who makes this. It might be GSI again, but it's a little scraper that kind of has a hard plastic side and then a rubber side over here. And that's just great for cleaning up your pots and pans primarily, but you can use it for your bowls and stuff. Uh, so I just use some biodegradable soap uh, and some water and I'll, I'll clean the pots like that. A lot of times in a pan, if, uh, if it's kind of some baked on stuff, I'll put it back on the stove and put some water in it and get the water heat, maybe even boil it, and that'll kind of help get the stuff unstuck a little better. Then I will usually like to bring a kettle uh, either a small one like this. I have a bigger version of it, a bigger version as well. I actually really like the bigger version because I can kind of nest some other stuff in here. So I have this uh, other cup and you can obviously you use that to boil water. Boiling a water in a kettle is typically the fastest way uh, or something with a lid. So a kettle natively will come with a lid, but a lid will help your stuff boil a little faster. And in the kettle, I just put a couple of these stacking kind of cups in there. Uh, that way I have kind of my drink ware ready to go. And a lot of times I'll just toss like individual packaged uh, hot chocolate or apple cider or whatever I'm in the mood for, depending on the, the season, I guess, in here as well. If you're a coffee person, obviously you can pre-grind your coffee or grind it when you're out there, do a pour over, whatever you wanna do for coffee. Or if you're just really lazy, you just get the single serve uh, Starbucks or whatever you want. But a kettle is great. Obviously, if you don't want to bring more stuff, you can boil water <laughs> in pretty much anything. And then one other thing I get asked a lot about is defense against predators. Now I live in Colorado, there's a lot of predators, mountain lions, and maybe there's wolves, I don't know, there's coyotes and there's bears, but not grizzly bears, we got black bears here. So uh, I'm not too worried about that kind of stuff. I've camped a lot and I've backpacked a fair bit as well. And I've never had any issues myself, though there, I'm not gonna get into it. There's things that you could do, bear bags, stuff like that, that I usually did backpacking 
Typically when I'm car camping, I don't do that as much for one reason or another, but I do always have a gun on me at, at all times, camping or not, uh, just because that's what I do. But I do bring uh, bear spray camping as well. Bears in the lower 48 for the most part, I mean, you get up into Montana and stuff and you might have some grizzlies, but for the most part, bears are gonna leave you alone. And for the most part, mountain lions are gonna leave you alone as well. As long as you're not like messing with their babies or invading their territory and stuff like that. Having said that, I do always have bear spray close at hand and I'll usually bring it up into the tent with us at night or something just in case because I don't wanna shoot a bear or any predator for that matter unless it's a human trying to, to do me harm. But bear spray, good option to have. Also fire extinguishers, I keep a fire extinguisher in my vehicle but I also have one of these little fire extinguishers close at hand all the time as well. And then I have all kinds of lighting, but I'm not really gonna get into it. So stoves, again, this is a very simple, easy stove for me. This is a stove, it's actually a dual fuel stove. It can use butane or propane. The beauty of the butane is it comes in here. You can, I don't usually store it in here cause it can kind of come, you know, shake around and hit and kind of release some butane. So I usually take this out, but it's a very compact system. And butane is very fast because you put it in here, you clamp that down. This has a little igniter so it's ready to go. Doesn't take up much space and works really well. Propane works better than butane uh, for the most part, but it is more, there's a little more setup. There's usually a connector and you gotta screw the propane in and then you got this propane can kind of hanging out and the stoves are a little bit bigger. So for the most part, if I'm not going crazy high elevation and it's not like below freezing, I'll use butane. But if it is gonna be a little colder or I'm gonna be a little higher elevation, then I'll use propane or I'll use something like a jet boil, which is a mixture like an isobutane propane mixture. Uh, and that works the best at highest altitude and coldest temperature. But the, for the most part, I'll keep it simple with a butane stove. Uh, I can link this one. It's from Gas One, I think. But as is the case with all my gear, I kind of have a lot of different kind of stoves. This is another one that I use occasionally. This is a Coleman. It's all greasy on the bottom. I think I got grease all over me. Great. Uh, but this one has kind of a grill built into it. It's a two burner. And honestly, another not bad option is just your two burner Coleman. You get this one at Walmart. I've had it forever. It's cheap works well, it's just not the lightest and most compact option out there. And then one thing I will recommend honestly is in your camping bin, put some backpacking food. So I have some spam actually, some bars, uh, a couple bags of Mountain House. Uh, this is actually not, this is Backpacker's Pantry, but I have some Mountain House in here as well. I keep food at all times. It's shelf stable, it's gonna last forever and I don't have to worry about it in here, even if it's not what I'm planning on eating. This is just stuff I keep in here all the time and I'm not planning on eating. The reason is I've gone out where I've forgot the food. You know, I've left it in the freezer or whatever. I've, I forgot food when I went camping and had to dig into this stuff. Or maybe your refrigerator breaks and your food goes bad or maybe you're on a longer trip or maybe you just didn't plan to have as many mouths to feed or whatever. It's great just to have some kind of shelf stable food that you keep in your bin. And then really the last thing I'm gonna get into right here is this really kind of funny thing. This is like a, like a shower organizer kind of thing uh, that I actually just kind of restock here and there. But in here I keep, like I said earlier, I don't love to use them all the time, but paper plates, napkins, I keep bags in here, some Ziploc bags. I keep a bunch of extra utensils, batteries, more utensils, a lighter. Um, so you can kind of keep whatever you want in here. But I find something like this really just packs down small, fits a lot of stuff, goes nicely in a bin to keep things organized. And then when you're at camp or whatever and you wanna just hook this up to whatever just to kind of have it handy, you can do that. So kind of an unorthodox usage, use case for whatever this is called, like a shower caddy kind of thing. So yeah, just kind of a, <laughs> a weird thing 
that I like to use. And yeah, I keep some other stuff in here, but again, I made a whole video on the bin, so if you wanna watch that, check it out. Again, not a lot has changed, but hopefully that kind of gave you a quick glimpse into most of the gear that you see when I'm camping. Granted, I am a gear tester. I have relationships with dozens and dozens of companies, so a lot of times I'll be testing gear, I'll be trying out a product or whatever, but what you see here is kind of the core gear that I find myself coming back to uh, over and over again, even if I have the new hottest stove or the new hottest that, this is kind of what I end up using. And hopefully that kind of helps you make a decision. None of the companies that you saw anywhere have paid me any money to, to use their products or anything. Granted, a lot of them I do get for free and that's just the nature of it, but I have use literally dozens of stoves and dozens of pans and a bunch of different kettles. Uh, and th these are these are what I like, so they're what I use. Yeah, I hope that helps. And really, I, I am a gear-centric channel, and I say this in a lot of videos, but use whatever you have. Use what's within your budget. Just because I'm using some expensive thing, if I'm using an expensive thing, does not mean that you need that expensive thing. You can trust that what I'm using, if I say that I like it and you see me using it a lot, chances are it's a good buy. Uh, so I'm not gonna steer you wrong in that regard, but I don't ever want you to feel like you're limited to go camping because you need to save up and buy a certain thing. That's something I see in my videos a lot, like, oh, I'm just saving up to get this and this and this so I can go camping. And really you don't need that because most of what you have is, is at home already, again pots, pans, silverware, food. Uh, most of that stuff you can bring out camping. And aside from like a little stove, you might not need anything. And you don't even need a stove. If you just want to make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or whatever, just take those camping. No, nobody is saying that you need to cook food when you're out camping. I just don't really like sandwiches, which is why we usually cook food when we're out camping. But anything you can do, again, this is kind of my mentality of camping, anything you can do ahead of time to make you waste less time when you're out camping is thumbs up in my book. But if you love to cook, by all means, cook for hours and hours when you're out camping. Rock on. Well, hope that super random kind of off the cuff video was helpful. This video was made directly as an answer to a bunch of questions that I get. So I always appreciate questions down below uh, because I make a lot of videos from them and I kind of just know it gives me a better grasp of what you guys want to see on the channel. So yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed, comment down below. And until next time, guys, take care.